So you have just heard about the efficiency of our programs running on, on the 4x4 card and on the mezzanine card that was previously shown. One of the major directions that the Synapse team is actually approaching is bringing True North to mobile systems and devices. And in order to do that, we have developed an IBM True North mobile development platform. And we're now working with our deep vertical industry partners, business partners, government agencies, universities, and IBM internally to bring this technology to the real world. So I'd like to give you a few words about the system, but before that, I want to show you the system, and we call it internally, one million neurons in your pocket. So this system is quite amazing, actually. You'll hear all the details in a second. But this exact board was just running the slice of NeoVision demo that Brian Tabo was just showing you five minutes ago. I, I sneaked down there and disconnected it. So sorry, Brian, your demo probably just died, but you'll have the board back in five minutes. Uh, so one million neurons in your pocket. Uh, let's take a closer look at this board. What exactly does it have? On the left there, you see the True North Synapse IBM neuromorphic chip. Next to it, on the right, is the Zinc SOC system on the chip, which has two uh, ARM core processors as well as some FPGA fabric. And this, this is mainly used to do transduction between spikes and the real-world signals. And also, if you want, this can also perform some pre-processing and post-processing of the data that's received and sent to the True North chip. Now, in order to, to, to support the Zinc FPGA, we have the flash memory on the right there that's actually doing the configuration of the FPGA, as well as we have several Micron DDR3 uh, memory blocks to provide storage. And this board has a variety of standard interfaces for you to communicate with this board. Specifically, we have the JTAG interface for debugging purposes. We have a UART interface, a USB interface, and an Ethernet interface. We've also built in several sensors right into this board. So we have a pressure sensor as well as a motion sensor, which combines a gyroscope, a magnetometer, and an accelerometer on this board. So quite powerful, as you can see. Also, we have various additional I.O. connectors on this board. This board can control a motor, for example. We have a motor control connector that can generate pulse width modulated signals or any other encoding that you like directly from the Zinc FPGA. We also have a Zinc GPIO connector that you can connect additional circuitry straight to the Zinc. Besides the Zinc connections, we, we also have the True North connections directly. For example, as you can see around the boundary of the True North, we have three DVS sensor connectors. And those are the connectors that are specifically designed to connect directly to Toby Delbrook's dynamic vision sensor. So we can connect to one board, we can connect three of these sensors simultaneously. And besides that, we have a general True North IO port connector, which can communicate with any other sensor that can speak the language of spikes directly to True North. Now, just to give you an idea of this one million neurons in my pocket, it's 70 millimeters by 125 millimeters, so very compact. And the weight of this board comes just under 100 grams. And the addition of the True North chip has actually negligible effect on the power consumption of this board. So this board power consumption is completely dominated by the Zinc SOC in this case. Now, I'd like to give you a few ideas of the applications for this board. This board is very compact. It's miniature form, so like I said, we can directly combine it with uh, cameras, or in our case, a dynamic vision sensor directly. We can embed it in a very small space and use it in that miniature form factor. We can also, this board is also very user-friendly. Like I said, it uses the Ethernet, it uses the USB. There's various ways that you can directly take this board and plug it into your laptop, for example. So we envision university students running their neural algorithms right there sitting, while sitting in the library and working on our neuroscience algorithms together with the board. The board is real time, which is very important, as Brian has mentioned earlier. It can take input from multiple sensors simultaneously, process them in real time, and give guidance. For example, in this case, we have a car. A driver can get real time guidance on collision avoidance and potential environmental changes right there on the spot. The board is very low power. I think Rodrigo has mentioned that this board the, new, the Synapse chip can run for one week full blast if it's embedded directly into a cell phone. So you can envision this board working together with portable devices very efficiently. For example, a cell phone or a tablet or whatever else uh, you want to you wanna play with. Uh, and of course, this board is very low weight, under 100 grams. So we envision this board to be efficiently 
integrated into, for example, a quadcopter. Here I have a delivery copter. All of these applications can be very efficiently integrated. And again, this board is very low power, it's low weight, it's miniature form, real time and user friendly. And as you can see with, this, with these pro properties, the applications of this board are limitless. And we envision this board having an impact on every aspect of our everyday life. And with that, while I connect this board back to our Synapse ecosystem so Brian can run the demos, uh, Jun Sawada is going to talk about the second direction that we're pursuing, which is the scale-up direction. So uh, Philip talked about one direction of going into the future. That is mobile, this extremely high efficiency of True North processor allowed to build a tiny, energy efficient, but still intelligent devices. But we can use the same high efficiency for going different direction, basically going to big system, and still keep the total power consumption in a reasonable level. So the first thing I'm going to show you is this uh, system we are planning to build. So we've already shown you here this 16 chip board, which is uh, um, when we build this system, when we build this system, we already thought about how to go even bigger. So we designed the board in such a way that if we simply stack them together, the True North chip on the board will talk to each other naturally using the built-in communication interface and creating a seamless, larger grid of 2D network. And so in this case, we are trying to put eight boards together, creating 128 chip system with 128 million neurons and 32 billion synapses, and still consumes only the reasonable, uh, comparable amount of power as your desktop computer, or even less. So this would be a very ideal platform to build a large-scale neural network and uh, develop new applications. And uh, this is not the end of the story. We are thinking about far into the future. So we have this one chip of uh, 256 million synapses. And we've already shown you putting these together on a 16-chip board creating 4 billion synapses. This board consumes 7 watts of power. Majority of the power is consumed by FPGA, ARM processors, and network interfaces. True North consumes only 1 watt of power. But if we put 256 of them together in a single rack, it will create a 4,096 chip system with one trillion synapses in a single computer. It is an unprecedented large number of synapses if we can build it. And it consumes almost just a four kilowatt of power. And if we connect 96 of them together, <laughs> we can create a neural supercomputer with 100 trillion synapses and uh, four, uh, 400, 400 billion neurons. And it consumes 400 kilowatt of power, but compared to Blue Gene Q supercomputers, uh, Damendra showed earlier, that consumes 7.9 megawatts. This consumes only 1 20th of the power. And even more, that Blue Gene computer runs the human scale, uh, the neural, neural network in a 1,500 times, 1,500 times slower. Combine that, this system would be 30,000 times more energy efficient. And this number, 100 trillion synapses, is the same number of synapses we have in our brain. And this would be phenomenal once we could build it. So in order to get there, we have a lot of technical challenges. For example, 
what would be the power balances. I told you that this is dominated by FPGA and the network interfaces. How can we build a system that is true north heavy and while keeping the flexibility of the system? The other challenge is what kind of network topology we are going to use. In the conventional supercomputer, we are using torus networks because that kind of 4D, 5D torus network is natural to fit the physical simulation problem into the neural supercomputer. But this neural supercomputer may need a totally, completely new network topology. May, we may need a new network technology as well. And even more, the most importantly, how to program and how to train such a large scale neural network. There is no simulator that simulates this high, large scale neural network. So we have to do some new tricks and do some kind of hardware acceleration to do the training. And even more, we may employ 3D chip technologies or 3D packaging technologies to go even pack more neurons and new, uh, more synapses into a tiny, um, tiny, tiny systems. So there are many research challenges and this is very exciting. So this is, um, this is the, basically the future vision we have. And this is concluding all the technical uh, presentations I think everybody has become an expert in True North system. We could have an exam, <laughs> but uh, just in case you want to have more education, my colleague Bill Risk is giving a talk about uh, uh, SNAPS University. So over roughly the last 80 minutes, my colleagues have bombarded you with a great deal of new information, new concepts, new ideas, new terminology. And it wouldn't be at all strange if you felt like you'd sailed into strange waters uh, populated by mysterious beasts with odd names like correlates, neurosynaptic cores, true north architecture, and compass. And so in order to help those who are interested in venturing into these waters navigate a little more safely, we've been developing a training curriculum Informally, we call it Synapse University, and you've actually gotten a little taste of it this morning, which you've heard in the, or this afternoon. In the last 85 minutes or so, uh, you've gotten a condensed version of what we typically start Synapse University with, uh, some information about the architecture, about how we program, and uh, how we do applications. We started offering this last year as an in-person, on-site, hands-on training session, so we would bring people here, um, begin with some of the information you've just heard, but in addition, we would take them through the actual process of sitting down, designing simple correlates, running them on the simulator. To support that activity, uh, we've developed some teaching materials. There's a, a more formal textbook, but there's also what you see down in the lower uh, part here is a workbook that we affectionately call Correlates for Dummies, although the official name is the Correlate User Guide, that walks you through some very simple step-by-step -step examples that build on each other to uh, develop some of the ideas of correlate writing. Now in the past, we've mostly offered this internally to IBMers. Just this year, we've started offering it to some of our government partners. We really want to make the Synapse ecosystem and the training more widely available. And so to that end, We've been trying to put some of the curriculum that's uh, amenable to it online in the forms of videos that people can watch. We've put the correlate programming environment and the complex simulator on the cloud so that you can log in and uh, do correlate writing using uh, IBM SoftLayer uh, cloud product. And as the single chip board that Philippe just talked about becomes available, what we envision is being able to provide it so that you can plug it with an Ethernet cable into your laptop, have the software running on your laptop or accessing the, the cloud instance through your laptop and develop correlates and run them not just on the simulator but on the chip itself. 